In today's video, which memory card you should choose for the Fujifilm XM5, one of the most popular, let's say, travel, vlogging, whatever cameras below a thousand bucks. So stay tuned. <laughs> To make this video more or less pointless from the very beginning, it doesn't really matter which memory card you choose. In the detail, yes, but let me explain. Fujifilm decided to use basically the same memory card controller as is as in the Fujifilm X106, which, don't get me wrong, is an amazing camera, but the memory card controller was too slow at least in my point of view back then as well. So to make it short, the Fujifilm XM5 can only make use of UHS-1 SD memory cards. These are those memory cards with one contact row at the back. You can of course use UHS-2 memory cards with two contact rows on the back, but the second contact row necessary for really high speed is just ignored because the memory card controller here only has one contact row. So it doesn't really matter which memory card you choose as long as it's in let's say mid-range memory card or let's say a little bit higher end entry level card. I will choose the Alexa 1066X memory card it's really cheap and currently our price performance recommendation. By the way, if you want to check out all results and hourly updated price performance recommendation, you can find the link in the video description below. We tested over 40 SD memory cards and the camera is set up to uncompressed war, but let's say, which I would say is a good compromise. And what you could hear before, was the very tiny image buffer. Now we are already limited by the memory card controller. And as you can hear, yeah, speed is not the biggest advantage from the Fujifilm XM5. I have set up the camera to 20 frames per second. And as you heard, there's yeah no real point in it because the image buffer is, f or is filled up so fast. I now reduce the speed to eight frames per second and now you can hear the camera can take it a little bit longer but we are already limited. So in terms of continuous shooting performance is definitely not the best camera you could go for. There are better cameras out there and the memory card controller is kind of slow. Therefore from over 40 memory cards we tested over 30 are in the top 10 percent because the performance is limited or bottleneck by the camera, not by the memory cards. So you can buy a good UHS-1 SD memory card. You can basically buy any UHS-2 SD memory card you want. The performance will probably almost be the same. But if you want to have a recommendation, as already mentioned, for UHS-1 memory cards, and it's like real price performance, the Alexa 1066X is as of taping this video, the best card, but as mentioned, check out the link in the video description. The uh, table is updated every hour with the new price performance recommendation. And let's say for more, yeah, like mid-range UHS-2 memory cards, I would take the Sabrent Rocket V60 for 256 gigabytes. It's usually 40 to 60 bucks, depending on your currency. So absolutely okay usually and the readout speed is yeah three times as fast compared to normal UHS-1 memory cards so that would be my decision because it's a faster card especially readout speed and let's say you're going to change the camera or maybe you have a second camera which is capable of UHS-2 it's a good middle ground but I can already hear you asking, okay, what's about 6K video? Because it's such high quality. Are those simple UHS-1 V30 or U3 memory cards fine? Yes, because the camera can't write any faster. Therefore, you have to deal with what the camera can do. And Fujifilm just limited the bitrate, so you can shoot 6K video on just simple UHS-1 SD memory cards. Absolutely no problem, you can do so. 
which I think is actually a great feature because it saves so much space on your hard disk. So that's pretty amazing. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done already and you're interested in memory cards, please consider to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.